Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you so much for showing up on this Tuesday morning. My name is Chef Cheryl Tate. I am a partner uh, with the UMA Clinic, which is um, celebrating 25 years. That's wonderful. My goodness, consistency is key. Under the BVAL program, which is Black Visions of Wellness. I am a non-traditional partner in the organization where I work with other um, people, the other non-traditional um, people that um, deliver different things. I am a personal chef, so I deliver healthy meals where we have Reiki, we have massage therapy. We have some wonderful modalities of non-traditional services that can heal the Black person, okay? I'm here to talk about healthy eating. I've been talking about healthy eating for a very long time, and so what I understand is consistency is key, so we're gonna just going to keep talking about it, right? I, first thing I always like to establish when cooking is that you have to have a good pantry. You have to have a stock pantry. You can't be in a profession and go in and be confident and not have all your tools. You're not going to come, you know, you're not going to come to a good ending. It's not going to look as good as if you had everything. So cooking um, should be a wonderful relaxing thing, but it's not if you don't have everything you need. Just equate that to working, okay? So having a stock pantry is important, okay? Because we want to eat well, okay? And so there's a lot of factors. So our goal is to get you back in the kitchen and at least feel comfortable about what it is you're doing, okay? Because um, you have the power to change your health. You have the power to change from, go from one uh, ailment to no ailment if you are disciplined and you follow some directions. No one else can do it for you. Maybe you can pay somebody to do it, but if you do it yourself, there's a more rewarding um, aspect to it and you'll feel so much better. Pantries are important, okay? Because when I started what I was doing this morning, when I got up this morning and I said, okay, this is what I'm going to make. Where's my grocery list? My grocery list had three things and those three things were produce items. Aside from that, I had already had them in my pantry and that was my vinegars. Okay, so we should always have some red vinegar, some white wine vinegar. I don't have it here, but that's okay. It's in the cupboard. Rice vinegar, apple cider vinegar. We're going to be using red vinegar in our recipe today. White vinegar is pretty good to have around the house. It's good. You'll find some recipes here and there that will have it. But white vinegar is good for cleaning. It's excellent for cleaning. You know, you know it's good to have. Have it in your pantry. As far as oils are concerned, you know, I believe in stand on olive oil. Many people like other oils, which are fine. This has been around since biblical times. We know the benefits of it. It's something that I always reach for. That's why it's in a container where I can reach for it quickly. Coconut oil is really good to have in the house period because coconut oil is a different fat from olive oil. Still, it's good if you're health conscious, you can use it, but it's also good for your skin. It's really good just to have in the bathroom too. So one should have two jars in your house. Okay. Sesame oil is really good for just seasoning. That's why it's in a small bottle. It costs a lot. Of course, it's from the sesame seed. We know the sesame seed is small. So it's really good in seasoning. Um, a dish as well as you know if you're going to um, use olive oil or coconut oil usually you're using this and of course we know another fat can be butter but these are just things that one should have in their cupboard at all times because you never know when you want to come home 
you saw this recipe or you're hearing about somebody talking about food, you go, God, I want to go home and make that. Or we want you to think about going home and making it. <laughs> and you go, what's in my pantry? Okay, gosh, okay, I know I need some vinegar. And then I have some beans. Oh, well, all I need to go to stores get some cilantro or something. I can do that, okay? It's just one quick trip. You know, hopefully the store is not all that crowded. So with that in mind, that kind of lowered the stress level of whatever it was that you were going to do because you had things already in your, already in your cupboard, okay? That's planning ahead. That's, that's really something that I am always going to talk about is your pantry. Because once you, you know, when you come home, sometimes you're tired, you don't know what you want to do, but you have something in there that you could just reach for, that you could pull out, that you can make that will be nutritious. Okay. And that's what we're working on. That's the goal here. We continue this, this journey of eating. Well, with me, you'll see that we can always have something going on every week. All right. So this is going to be something real fun. I thought about how was I going to teach, you know, cooking and going forward. So, hey, let's use the alphabet. Wow, okay. So we're gonna make a triple A salad. How fun, okay. And the A's are arugula, avocado, and artichoke, okay. Now last week I talked about um, leafy greens. And leafy greens, if we were to eat at least a serving a day, every day of our lives, I'm gonna say it again, if we ate a serving every day of our lives, our cognitive um, condition would improve by 11 years. So I'm gonna say um, at 65, if you were to eat greens, arugula, kale, collards, spinach, Brussels sprouts, those leafy greens, uh, let's say, okay, uh, 65, okay, let's say if you were doing that, and you're eating, you know, eating those collards every day. Okay, 65, you would have the cognitive skills of a 15, okay, okay, 11 years. Okay, so 65, so you're talking about what? 54, hope I got that right. Okay, so, uh, but 11 years off of your cognitive capability, if you were just to eat greens every day, that's not too hard to do. Okay, it's not too hard to do, especially if you know it. Okay, and you go, man, when I get 80, I won't be, you know. <laughs> but if you know you can be thinking like a 69 year old, you know, then you would make that step, you would make that conscious decision to do that. Okay, I think that's a really good conscious decision. And yes, I came across this information um, just last week because I believe in healthy and eating healthy greens. So, you know, just having that information is just, that's, that's, you know, what do you call that? You know, that's ammunition. That's ammunition. Okay. So arugula, very nice. It's a peppery type of leaf. It's kind of small. It's a little delicate. You don't see it too often. It's maybe in a, um, in a salad mix but hardly ever by itself. So you have to be deliberate when you're buying arugula. You have to really have something to do with it, okay? But it's a wonderful leaf. It smells wonderful. It, smells, it has a nice peppery taste to it and um, mustard-like flavor. So we're going to put some of this excuse me, in our bowl, okay? So again, that wonderful information on greens. Heck, we should be growing some greens somewhere so we can eat it, so we can be thinking straight, okay? I'm just saying, all right? Okay, avocado. Avocado, we know, is a low-fat food. It is very, very good. I cannot tell you about the benefits of avocado as much as I can to say just eat it, okay? <laughs> Eat it as much as you can, all right? This is one whole avocado. You know, if you can, we're in California and um, we're very fortunate in California to have produce, to have access to produce, you know? So um, we should take advantage of that. So um, we should be eating more vegetables, of course. But again, if, if you can eat an avocado, as many times as you can. Again, we're in Southern California. You know, it's, it's in a lot of foods that we take in. 
make it a habit. Just just make it a habit to get some get some avocado. All right. Sunny California. Wonderful benefits. There's avocado trees around. My goodness. Okay. So I have this beautiful avocado and artichoke. Excuse me. Avocado. The next one is artichoke. Now, doing really, excuse me, research on artichokes. Well, you know, it may be looking different from the leafy greens, but in researching artichokes, it has um, low fiber, um, excuse me, high in fiber, low in carbs, um, good for your digestive system. You know, there was some research on artichokes where uh, <clears throat> people that had um, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, were uh, asked to eat this for like 20 to 30 days and it lowered their um, need for the medication. Okay, so there's something in artichokes that's really good for digestion. They're high in fiber. Maybe that could be one of the reasons because it's high in fiber and it goes through your system and um, helps with your uh, absorption. Um, another is, uh, okay, high in fiber, <laughs> really good for digestion. Um, and it will lower your cholesterol. So really all these things that we're talking about indigestion, uh, um, helping the digestion and um, uh, sorry, cholesterol, they all help. Okay, so, and so good to have, <laughs> tried to make a, um, tried to take an artichoke raw and cut it up, it was madness. So I like the hearts, they taste very good. They're marinated in a great brine. You know, this is how you're going to see it in the store. When you do see it in the produce section and the fresh fruit section, uh, it's a little intimidating. You know, as a matter of fact, it has thorns. So um, you can try that. Definitely Google how you would uh, prepare one raw. And they're very good. They're very good. You know? But we are going to take the marinated artichoke part route okay very high in fiber really good for your um digestive system anti-inflammatory for the digestive system low in cholesterol okay so we're gonna put this on here it's really coming out now i have a lot of green here there's a lot of green here all right and my um always talk about belief. No, I'm going to say this is what I know, is that color is important, okay? So we have green avocado, green artichoke hearts, green arugula. We're going to put some red onion. Now the recipe called for shallots, and shallots are okay too. Shallots are a cross between garlic and onion, and they're fine. They're a little more expensive, but a red onion is just as good. Okay, so color, color, color. I wanted to add these that I had on my counter, okay? These Twilight Cherry Tomatoes. Now, I like the Twilight ones when I go to the store because they're dark, okay? They're really, really green, dark, purple, dark, okay? And my philosophy is anything that's dark in nature, anything that is has a deep color is more nutrient dense, more nutrient dense. We just want to remember that nutrient dense. When we're out and we're looking at produce, we need to look at the color of the produce. Okay. Is it a deep color? These, you know, we have different color tomatoes. I like the deep red ones, the almost green Green for a reason, but not meaning that they're um, not right, but green because they're uh, full of color and flavor, okay? So we have this wonderful triple-A salad, okay? And we're going to make a salad dressing, right? So again, salad dressings are an acid and a fat. It's two things. We go to the grocery store, we look at the wonderful aisle of salad dressings, you're going to read the label and you're going to find a fat and an acid. Two things. Those are two basic things, okay? And everything else is added on after that, okay? Hope I'm not talking too much. But 
It's a fat and an acid. So this salad dressing is asking for red wine vinegar that we're going to use the last of this bowl, last of this bottle. Okay. It's asking for a quarter cup. No, it's not a quarter cup. I go, I go through red wine vinegar a lot um, because I'm making my own salad dressings. So in this, you know, this really isn't expensive. You know, especially if you buy those bottle dressings, they tend to be pricey and they have uh, preservatives in them. So if you can invest your money in some vinegars and some oils, you'll find that you'll save money over time just um, by making it yourself. And again, it's healthier. Okay, so I'm gonna have a quarter cup of red wine vinegar. Okay, and oops, Dijon mustard. Okay, Dijon mustard should be a staple <laughs> in your refrigerator. Okay, we haven't even started talking about pantries, but I hope that you know with you watching this. You already have an idea that you may want to start cooking for yourself. So, you know, if we have some coins, we should start working on our pantry. Okay. We we'll start working on our pantry. I'm going to say that again. Okay. Okay. So, red wine vinegar, just a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. This has a tendency to come out really fast. We should squirt out too much. Only need a tablespoon. Okay, I'm gonna be conservative. It's a tablespoon. Dijon mustard. The reason why um, most recipes call for Dijon mustard is because there's white wine in it. That's one of the flavorings in it. And it's a very, very simple mustard too. It's just mustard seed, vinegar, white wine, turmeric, wonderful, salt, that's it. The Jean mustard is very, very, very simple, but it's a basic thing throughout, throughout cooking. Okay. Lemon. Okay. Lemons are expensive these days. My goodness. Okay. If somebody has a tree, let me know. Right. So asking for some lemon, juice of the lemon. I'm going to do like about one and a half. It's one and a half tablespoons. Okay. Salt and pepper. And some pepper. I like coarse ground. Has more flavor in it. So I'm gonna whip this up a little bit. Okay. Now again. Oh, we olive oil. I can look at it and tell. I need some olive oil. Okay. All right. So. Salad dressings are a staple in what it is we should have in our refrigerator. But guess what? We have, you know, wonderful pantry items that we can make salad dressing every day. We can make salad dressings once a week. Oil, vinegar, this Dijon mustard, the lemon juice, they can stay in a jar in your refrigerator for, um, for a week, for a week or two. That means you're gonna be eating some salads. You're gonna pull out your fresh salad dressing. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna feel good about what it is you ate because you made it, okay? So, I'm gonna drizzle this on here. Yeah, this looks good. Okay. So well, this is a bomb salad. You know, I've demonstrated it uh, several times. I've talked to people about this because again, I like all the ingredients in it. It's colorful. I'm, you know, again, I'm one for color. I'm one for color. You have to put some something on it. You could even put, let me see, cut up some bell pepper, you know, some red bell pepper or some green bell pepper, but it's simple. It's just very simple as it is. Just very simple. Okay, let me grab a bite, then we're gonna move on to our next. Oh, off. Uh, we're gonna move on to our next one. But this is good. Mm. 
have a call. Mm. Good. Okay. Mm. <laughs> I'm not just pretending that tastes good. <laughs> wow. Okay. Oh. Triple A salad. Avocado, arugula, artichoke hearts. Very healthy. It's a great salad. Chicken breast. You put some chicken breast on there. That's a, that's a meal right there. Okay. B. If you know Chef Cheryl, I am a person who, excuse me, um, I like fresh. I like it healthy. If I can make it healthy, I will. If I can leave out something that's not very healthy, I will. So I'm a hummus fiend. I love hummus, okay? From when I started um, eating it, with a friend who was uh, married to an Israeli. So we really had wonderful times making uh, hummus from scratch and fighting over how much garlic to put in there. So, I mean, I, I like to say that I know a little bit about hummus, okay? <laughs> to where it is, people didn't want to come around you because you smelled so much garlic, okay? That's okay, you were healthy, but it was all right. Hummus, okay? We know it consists of three major things, which is garlic, Tahini, which is a paste of sesame seeds. This a, excuse me, a paste of sesame seeds. That's all it is. Um, garlic, olive oil, and tahini. Okay. Now here's some tahini because I have it. My goodness. Oh, on my counter. Have it on my counter is something I always have. Like I said, I always like hummus. I have this regularly by my, you know, right by the pantry. I always have this. But this is bajia. And, oh, excuse me. Hummus, garlic, tahini, garbanzo beans, olive oil. Those are four components of hummus, okay? That's, a, that's the bedrock. That's the foundation of hummus, all right? This is bajia. And, you know, this is, uh, hummus is, is a med Mediterranean. They eat it a lot over in Europe, but this is Maltese hummus. This is Vigia, this is from another part of the world where they do things differently. They do things differently in other parts of the world. So we're going to have that today, right? So it calls for red beans, okay? Now hummus can be made with any type of bean, but garbanzo beans, like I said, that's the bedrock, that's the, that's the foundation. But you can do it on black eyed peas, white beans, uh, red beans, uh, chili beans, uh, any type of bean, any type of bean, okay? You could use a vegetable if you want. So for bajia, we are going to use red kidney beans. Okay, wait, hold on. There is a process. Let's stop back, let's right back again. Okay, red kidney beans, we're not gonna put them in right away. Red kidney beans, garlic, okay. I like my garlic fresh. Unfortunately, I, I'm spoiled. I haven't been getting it fresh and smashing it, but this is good too. Garlic, just as good. I don't like minced garlic, but as long as I can cut it up, I'm happy. Okay, fresh parsley. I have fresh parsley in my refrigerator from other uh, meals, but I have some curly curly leaf parsley and some flat leaf parsley. And yes, we can use the stems. It is the same thing as the, uh, as the herb itself, especially when we're putting it in a food processor. You know, it, it's just as good and just as nutritious and just as flavorful. Okay, so we cut this up a little bit, but this is the tops of the parsley that we're going to use in here. Okay, that's what's gonna go in, right? Okay, so there's a process to hummus, like there's a process to bajia. Okay, so what we wanna do is put the garlic in. And like I said, I like a lot of garlic, okay? Right, and 
some of it says it asked for some um, vinegar, okay? But here's our fun thing about today what we have. We have artichoke brine, oh my gosh, okay? So we can use this in place of the water that, we're all, that you always need in a hummus to have everything come together, okay? So to me, when I made this and I demonstrated before and I was looking around, I didn't have a water bottle in front of me. I said, oh, wow, let me use this brine. How can I use this? So, you know, you have to think outside the box sometimes. And once you get in the kitchen and you become comfortable, you will come across these things, okay? So, artichoke brine. Haven't lost anything. Okay, so olive oil. Okay, salt. Okay, all right. So I am, like I said, I'm a hummus person. I am a hummus person. So. I always go back to the basics. I always go back to the basics. Hummus has cumin in it. Cumin is a wonderful, wonderful spice. It, it brings out anything Mediterranean that you're, that you're cooking with. Anything Mediterranean, whether it be hummus, zug, uh, tzatziki, um, any type of Mediterranean salad. Uh, it didn't call for this. It, it didn't call for um, it in this salad, but that's okay. But in hummus, you really want a little bajia, really want a little cool. Trust me, you will appreciate having the spice in your pantry. You will. Okay? So, a wonderful, wonderful food processor. You can't leave home without it. One should always have a food processor. If you don't, go invest in one. A blender of some type will really do be a benefit to you. I cannot e express it enough. Just like your pantry, you should have a blender, okay? It's a process. It's a process, but again, I'm going, I'm here to encourage you. I'm gonna follow this process just like I make hummus, okay? And so what I did is I, I processed the, the oil and the seasonings and the uh, garlic. And so what we want is a watery, we want a watery paste, okay? Which is really good. We can put some more oil in this, but not really because we you know this is bajia. It's not really the same consistency. It's just the same process, okay? So in this, we're gonna put our our parsley. And I always get excited about Vigia. Because it's so fresh. Very fresh. Vigia. Okay. And then we're going to put our kidney beans in. We're going to do this a little at a time. Okay. So we're looking for a pasty consistency. Okay. All right. Almost there. Almost there. Okay. I like that we still have this, we still have watery consistency. Okay. That means we can still put our, our beans in. Not have to do anything more at this point. Okay, really nice. This has to line up, so it will not work. It's the beauty of these ninja blenders. You can't mess up. Okay. All righty. Okay. So I'm gonna push the sides down, but this 
is how this should look. Okay, I'm gonna pulse this one more time. Okay, face a little bit. It didn't need a lot of seasoning because it had all this seasoning. We didn't have to guess. This is excellent, excellent. You call it, this is brine, what the um, artichokes are uh, sitting in. So we should not let this go to waste, okay? Definitely not let it go to waste, okay? Hey, all right, all right, all right. Look at this, look at this. All righty. All right, let's see it's here, okay. Okay, so this is, like I said, this is Bajia, okay. Okay, it has the same consistency as hummus, as, as it is a Maltese hummus but it's made with red beans, parsley, garlic, hammed it up in the garlic, okay? And um, garlic, parsley, and uh, brine, really good, really, really good, and kidney beans, okay? So I have this here with, um, again, you know how I am about color, with some red bell pepper, some yellow bell pepper. It's really good with, uh, uh, with crackers. I like uh, for us that don't have, that have the gluten uh, conditions, you can eat it with a seed cracker, which is really, really good. Uh, this is just one of my favorite, favorite things to eat, as well as hummus, because it's just really healthy. I mean, you know, if we're looking at red beans, I think about red beans, Oh, <laughs> Think about red beans and the red in the fruit in the food. So that's your lycopene. Of course, that's really of course healthy for you. But the parsley, which is just wonderful, it is a green leafy herb. So all we've done here, if we really cook some healthy stuff. And it's tasty. Oh my gosh. You know, this brine really just hit it out the park. This is, you know, when you go in the store and you're looking for artichoke parts, there's not a lot of brands out there. There's only about two or three, only about two or three companies out there that are um, doing such products as this. But this is Napoleon. Um, they have some other um, companies that have pickled um, vegetables. They're okay. But I find that this particular product um, has a really good brine. They put wonderful, wonderful uh, spices in their brine, my goodness. And it's simple, okay? Sunflower oil, salt, spices, a little citric acid. So just, just wonderful. Artichoke hearts, water, sunflower oil, salt, spices, that's it, okay? So I just wanted us to see the wonderful things that we have in our pantry, the wonderful things that we can do with healthy foods. Because again, I had beans, I had my olive oils, I had my vinegars. I went to go get my marinated artichoke parts, but again, this will sit in your refrigerator very good because again, it's vinegar. But then again, hey, pull it out and make another salad. This is really good. It's really good. Does anybody have any questions, any comments? Anybody out there, wonderful people? Yay. <laughs> Hello. I don't, hey, hey, Chef Cyril. No, I don't have any comments. Well, no, I don't have any questions. The only comment that I have is I found this very, very informative. So oh. you, mentioned, you mentioned quite a few things that I wasn't 
uh, aware of. So I, I do have some stuff to take away, especially the part about the leafy or the green vegetables uh, every day. You know, it's a, sometimes it's hard to incorporate those uh, good uh, eats, if you will, healthy eats. Uh, mm -hmm. But knowing that it'll add 11 years, because I already think my mind is going to be <laughs> to go. So I'm just saying, huh? <laughs> yeah. So I need to, I need to uh, ingest some more veggies on a regular, yeah, regular, yeah, yeah. yeah regular. You know, um, and and mind you, it's it's when when I do this and I think about you know having a green salad or something. I'll kind of get to the end of the day. Okay, what did I have green? Okay, mm -hmm. what did I do? Well, let me go. Let me go eat mm -hmm. something because I think about that, you know. But one of the things that I have found as Black people is that we're always eating collard greens. Oh yeah. Or maybe with something, but we're always eating collard greens, and those are such a good source. Yeah. It's such a good source. So let's say if you had it twice a week, you know, mm -hmm. that would put you closer to you know eating it every day. Mm -hmm. You know. You know, I kind of think about because I want to make eat. I want to make you know healthy eating easy. Mm -hmm. You know, a spinach salad. Oh, okay, okay. Oh my gosh, oh some collard greens. Oh my goodness, you know. And when we're in the kitchen, when we're in the kitchen, it, it, it becomes sort of like it becomes a habit of what. Okay, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? So we're we're just training ourselves because you know we're so used to going outside and thinking other people are going to give us our best interest in what it is we're going to eat, you know? Mm -hmm. We have to think about that. Okay. okay, and you got some lemons coming as soon as my tree starts okay. again. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, yes. We oh used God. them up because of COVID. I was doing juicing and I gave to my neighbors on each side of me. Uh, but once they, they start to bloom, I'll definitely give you a call. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> Guarantee lemon bars. No, um, your kitchen has been on my mind. Okay. <laughs> we'll have to work something out. Well, let's talk. Yeah, let's talk. You got my number. <laughs> yes, I do. Thank you so much. Does anybody have any questions? I think I'm going to try to make me some hummus this, this week. There you go.
that's priceless. You know, so if we were to think about, you know, going to Lakewood as opposed to paying a little bit more money, but oh my gosh, over here you're not really getting everything and your pantry's not coming together as fast as it should be. That's always my little two cent. It's in um, Lakewood, California. It's an employee owned store. So all the people in there own stock in their company and that carrot and that ginger ale and then that bottle of water, you know, so more so happy to go in there and help people because we know it is an employee owned venture. Okay. The name of the store is Winko. Um, don't talk about it till the cows come home. W-I-N-C-O. It's in Lakewood, California. It's an employee owned store. Your food dollar will go farther. Okay. Uh, you know, I, look, I told him, I said, I'm, a, I'm an honorary employee, okay? Because I'm, <laughs> I'm there at least two or three times a week because I need I need what I need. And even though I'm in Hawthorne, I'll hop on 405 to the 91, okay? I'll get on the 110 or wherever I am. I'll go to Lakewood because my food dollar will take me further. And really, you know, if you're in an economical car, you really can not expend anything except for full time, you know? But my name is Chef Cheryl Tate. Guys, have any more questions or anything? We are going to get going because um, I'm going to eat this vagina. I'm going to pack this salad up to eat later. But it's, it's mom salad. I just really encourage you to try these things, to get in your pantry. You know, contact me if you have any questions or anything. And next week, you know, we're going through the alphabet. We'll be doing something in C, okay? But if you have something that you would like for me to demonstrate, if you have a question or if there's, you know, a particular subject that you want me to cover, you know, I'm pretty versed in food. I love food. It's my life, you know, especially if it can help the person, especially if it can um, heal the individual. That's what we're looking for. So again, I'm Chef Cheryl Tate. Thank you so much. And I will see you next time. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Oh, thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Yay. Yay.